Hey Browns fans, welcome to Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson, Nathan Zagura alongside Bernie Kozar and Bernie. It's like a new incarnation of the Cardiac Kids. The Browns go to their fourth overtime game of the year, but again, fall short to the Buccaneers. What did you see on Sunday in Tampa? Well, I think to start out with, um, and not to be an apologist uh, for the offense or for the um, for the starting out of the games, but when Tampa Bay, when you have Mike Smith, the defensive coordinator, being replaced like he was, and you have a new defensive coordinator stepping in, you have a new scheme, you have new tendencies, so it's a little bit of an adjustment period, which I do think the Browns adjusted well to. That being said, it has been a slow start the whole season and how do you get guys making plays early in the game you see Todd Haley maneuvering with personnel groups with formations with motions and shifts but somehow some way guys are gonna have to create more separation I think down the field from the receiver standpoint to make those plays yeah you gotta get going these are your scripted plays now one thing to keep in mind the Browns offense is starting a rookie at quarterback a rookie at left tackle a rookie at running back a rookie at wide receiver and Bernie you don't have your quarterback, running back, or wide receiver one from week one when you played the Steelers. Tyrod Taylor not starting. Carlos Hyde and Josh Gordon both have been traded. Now, one thing, though, has been constant, and that's this defense leading the league in takeaways four more on Sunday, doing everything they can to help this team win. No doubt about it. Defensively has been kind of the glue. I think that's been the reason we're able to be in these games, get to four overtime games like this. And if you remember from the first game against the Steelers, uh, we were able to rush just four guys and drop seven in the back end and have really good success um, against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers like that. That's been a theme throughout the whole season. And if we could continue with defensively getting the turnovers with rushing just four guys, that's going to bode well, I think, for the back end of the season. Absolutely. And you saw some good rushing in this game up front. Miles Garrett, a couple of sacks. Emmanuel Agba, I thought, had one of his best games. Let's take a look at Agba and even a little offensive spark in our film breakdown brought to you by Papa John's. All right, Coach, let's take a look at some of the big plays at the end of this game that forced it into overtime against Tampa, we'll start on defense. Okay. Third and two at the nine. Got to get off the field. What happens? Well, you just said it. It's third and two at the nine in the fourth quarter, and we have to get off the field. And I thought, you know, obviously Greg comes up with a lot of different packages for our players. And we put Emmanuel down inside at times to rush against, you know, guards. As you can see him there, he drives this guy back off the ball. You know, the quarterback flushes a little bit, but he gets separation, and right there he's able to close and take the quarterback down. I, I think that's a heck of a play by him. It is a great job, and sometimes they say coverage and pass rush go hand in hand. Yes, they great do. Great job against those big, that mesh concept. You know, it all starts, you know, with the rush, but it also starts with the coverage. I mean, these guys, as you can see, we got these guys kind of mirrored, uh, so the quarterback really doesn't have a place to throw it. This game he had found some seams running the ball, you know, getting up the field. But again, Emmanuel made a heck of a play right there, getting off the block and finishing the tackle. And this is a great three-play sequence. So we had that, then the punt, Jabril with the big punt return. Now you're set up first and six, first uh, and ten at the 16 of the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. Only needed one play. Absolutely. Let's no, take a look. I, I think you know again the offensive staff did a great job. Uh, we took, we we're going to take a shot here. You know we knew they'd be in a two shell. We're trying to get uh, David and. Jarvis down the middle of the field. As you can see, David's kind of hooking in there. Jarvis is hooking in there. So the quarterback's just taught to play off the safety. The safety's over here. We get to throw this thing in here to Jarvis. What a catch, but it was really interesting because when it happened the way it happened, I seen him scrambling on the ground. I thought maybe he had dropped the ball. I wasn't for sure that he caught it. What he was trying to do is get the ball across the goal line for a touchdown. And boy, what a play by him to make the catch have enough awareness to understand nobody's around me to touch me. Let me make sure I finish this thing in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, it was a great play, and we look from the end zone view. And as you see, he's about to release the ball. That's, that's kind of what you want for your that's quarterback, it. right? That's the pocket. <laughs> that's the pocket. That's the pocket we need. And, again, a lot of credit to these guys. You know, Desmond's doing a great job on one of the premier pass rushers in all the pro football. Uh, these guys are handling their business, you know, from Joel Petonio all the way back to Chris Hubbard. They did a heck of a job to give Baker that opportunity to throw that ball in there. All right, Bernie, there you see Jarvis Landry making a big play in a big moment. And that was the theme in this game. You had Jamie Collins with the interception in overtime, Landry there. But what I loved about it, the football IQ, knowing to go out there, reach out. What does that say to the young guys on this team? 
I think not only to the young guys, but all guys on the team and definitely all younger players that are watching and younger coaches, the, the attention to detail, the ability to have that expertise of not just making the catch like he did, first and foremost as a receiver, make the play, make the catch, but then knowing the rules, knowing that he hasn't been touched down, the ability to be able to put it across the line of scrimmage, um, the goal line like that, shows you that that's the type of player you want leading your team. Absolutely. A great game from Jarvis Landry. You can see the chemistry between Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry grow as he came up with some big plays in big moments. And speaking of big, we'll be back with more of Browns All Access with Hugh Jackson next. After the break, Browns linebacker Jannard Avery was mic'd up for his first start. Yeah! And Christian Kirksey sits down with our Andrew Gribble. You know, this team will be ready to go against Pittsburgh. It's always ramming it up a notch once we go against Pittsburgh, so it'll be a lot of fun.